In time, you will know what it's like to snooze. To feel so hopelessly wide awake, yet to rest nonetheless. Dread it, run from it, sleep arrives all the same. And now it's here, or should I say, I am. When I'm finished, half of humanity will be asleep, half still awake, perfectly balanced, as all things should be. Now you may ask yourself, just how can one being dictate the destiny of all the universe's inhabitants? I shall tell you all of how I started as a survivor of a sadly preventable tragedy and ended up as the only one with the will to do what is necessary. Don't believe me? I understand. But I want you to realize the truth of this reality. At this moment, no living thing in the universe sleeps. Not the lowliest bacteria, nor the grandest celestial. While stars collapse and implode, and planets collide, blown to dust, all that possesses life remains conscious. All of it stays awake, in defiance of the essential biology guiding us towards slumber. All of it but you. When I'm finished, you will be the very first being in this universe to fall asleep. I am the only reason you are conscious, and the only reason you will have a good night's sleep. And because Thanos decrees it, you will sleep. But not yet. I have much to tell you. Let us begin with where I came from. I was born on Titan, a beautiful planet, filled to the brim with wonderful people of every kind. But that was the problem. On any given planet, every resource is finite. On Titan, the population was at odds with this fact. Too many mouths not enough to go around. And when our society faced collapse, I offered a solution to cut our population in half. Not in a prejudiced way, but random, dispassionate, fair to rich and poor alike. They called me a madman. And what I predicted came to pass. Titan is no longer the civilization it once was. What was practically an oasis is now a wasteland, drained of all that made it a perfect home to so many. If only they had listened. If only they could understand that sacrifice is not suffering, it is salvation. But I know now that others are weak, selfish, unwilling to part with what they know and love for the greater good, unwilling to pay just a small price for the glory of salvation. The reality is quite simple. This universe is finite, its resources are finite. If life is left unchecked, Life will cease to exist. I'm the only one who knows this. Or at least, the only one with a strong enough will to act. The universe needed correction. I gave it correction. And I will continue to do all that is necessary to ensure perfect balance. 
I began my journey by traveling to Nidavellir, where the gauntlet I now wear was forged with the power of a dying star. My plan was to travel across the universe and acquire six infinity stones, objects of immense power that I would harness with this gauntlet. Each stone possesses a different purpose. The first is the soul stone, capable of manipulating both the living and the dead. In combination with the other five, this stone allows for control over every being in the universe. Second is the Time Stone, which allows its user to travel through and control the flow of time itself. Third, the Space Stone. This one grants the power of teleportation, both for its user and any other matter. Fourth, the Mind Stone, which lets one read the thoughts of any living thing in existence. Number five, the Reality Stone. The Reality Stone enables the creation of alternate realities, even if such realities disobey the laws of physics. And finally, the Power Stone. This last stone grants immense strength and the ability to harness every last form of energy. Each stone provides incredible power alone, but with all six combined, one can accomplish things that gods may only dream of. My goal was to attain this power for the purpose of salvation. With a completed infinity gauntlet, I could erase half the universe's inhabitants with a snap of my fingers. There could not be a more efficient and merciful solution. So I set out in search of these stones. My first target was the Power Stone, which I sent Ronan the Accuser to fetch for me from Xandar. Disappointingly, Ronan failed when confronted by a band of misfits, and I had to go acquire the stone myself. I did so with great ease, then balanced Xandar's population with the newfound power I possessed. I then intercepted an Asgardian spacecraft, captained by the self-proclaimed God of Thunder. But not even a god could stop destiny from bestowing me with the space stone, extracted from the remains of a beautiful blue tesseract. The reality stone was perhaps the easiest of all to acquire. Owned by an eccentric collector, it quickly became mine with a trivial amount of effort upon arriving on the planet Nowhere. Shortly after, the very same misfits who interrupted Ronan's mission came to try interrupting mine. But with the Reality Stone in my possession, tricking them into self-sabotage was quite simple. Regretfully, one of these misfits was my beloved daughter, Gamora. However, she would soon become a critically important element the path to universal salvation. I took her with me and tried to show her the error of her ways. To get her to understand my cause, to know just how much I cared for her and wanted to protect not only her, but everyone. I reminded her of the childhood she'd suffered through prior to her adoption, going to bed hungry scrounging for scraps, barely surviving on a planet on the brink of collapse. I proclaimed to her the wondrous change the planet experienced after my act of liberation. It is now a paradise of full bellies and clear skies. 
but she would not accept the truth. And even if she'd fully come around to my cause, none of it would have mattered. While the reality stone was the easiest to acquire, the soul stone was inarguably the most difficult. After traveling to Vormir with my daughter and trekking to the summit of a great mountain, I found not the stone, but an ultimatum. In order to obtain the stone, I would have to sacrifice something I loved. And though she could not see it, my poor Gamora was one of the only things I have ever loved. Trading her life for the soul stone was one of the hardest things I have ever done. Few can understand the anguish of losing one's own child by their own hand. But even fewer can understand the importance of what I did that day. I had ignored my destiny once and could not make the same mistake again, even for her. After all, what good is a single life if the universe cannot provide for its well-being? What I did was not selfish, it was selfless. Most would be too vulnerable too concerned about their own feelings to complete such a task, but not I. The loss of one life, no matter how important to me, could never be as significant as the salvation of trillions. It is a choice I will never regret making, and would make ten thousand times more if it meant ensuring the success of future generations. So with the soul stone on hand, I set out to obtain the final two stones from a misguided gaggle of self-proclaimed heroes hoping to tell destiny how things should be. They put up a good fight, but all the effort in the universe could not stop my mission. On Titan, Several of these heroes spent too much time bickering amongst themselves to pose any real threat, and the owner of the Time Stone eventually placed it right in my hands, as if he'd suddenly recognized what must be. I then made my way to Earth, where an admirable but ultimately useless army had been attempting to defend the Mind Stone from my loyal assistance. Upon my arrival, they realized the futility of their defense and shattered the stone in a last-ditch effort to prevent fate, consequently killing one of their own that had been brought to life only by its power. They mourned the loss of their friend, but their selfish emotions turned out to be their greatest vulnerability. Their minds clouded by anguish, they could not see that the deed they just done was impermanent. With a flick of the wrist, I used the Time Stone to reassemble the Mind Stone, then took it straight from the skull of their reanimated ally. And I must say, though fun isn't something one considers when balancing the universe, so efficiently ensuring Destiny's arrival did put a smile on my face. And a moment later, the Infinity Gauntlet was complete. Distraught by what fate had decreed, the so-called God of Thunder attempted to murder me once more, lodging an axe deep in my chest. But not even such a wound would prove effective. Just as I told the almighty Thor on that day, he should have gone for the head. 
So with a snap of my fingers, destiny arrived. Half of all sentient life vanished from existence. The universal resource problem was solved for good. And though I may one day cease to exist, and the universe may eventually spiral out of control again, I can rest assured that under my watch, no one will go hungry or long for shelter that can't be had. On that day, with my greatest accomplishment behind me, I finally rested. And the next morning, watched the sun rise on a grateful universe. Sure, adjusting to the new status quo was difficult for many, but not nearly as difficult and prolonged as the inevitable crisis that so many civilizations were headed for or already enduring. What I did was not a tragedy. It was mercy. And now the time has come for sleep, just as I promised. In only a moment, Half of humanity will be at rest. The planet's sleep cycles in perfect balance. And it will all begin with you. Newly bestowed with the knowledge of my great deed. With the confidence that all is well in the universe. You shall fall into a deep, carefree slumber. At the snap of my fingers. In three, two, one.